What's going on, guys? I'm Bear DeGidio, and we are back with another episode of the Jackson Podcast. I'm sitting here with the greatest co-host of all time, Rampage Jackson. Oh, thank you. I'm sitting here with one of the greatest co-co-hosts, back from Colombia, back from Ecuador, back from Dubai, back from Turkey, undefeated still. The things he was doing down there, I can't even disclose because it's so outrageous. He also got a new tattoo. Yeah, I'm, not gonna, I'm not even going to say what it is. And we're, <laughs> and we're sitting here with the most requested guest of the year, ladies and gentlemen, Gilbert Melendez. Yeah! Everybody <laughs> has been dying to hear you again. You were on the Jake Shield. You made a brief appearance. And the Jackson Podcast Discord has been going outrageously crazy. For the most requested guest of the year, Gilbert Melendez. Hey, it's awesome to be here. Thank you guys for having me as always. I watch you guys all the time. And uh, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to being here. Strike Force in the house. That's what's up. Some Strike Force yeah, royalty. Right. Oh, yeah. We're here, dude. Strike Force yeah. champs. Uh, Come on, bro. We have two Strike Force champions here. Uh, Were you in the Strike Force? Up, no, I, I, I used to watch it. I used to watch it, but I, I never I never got over there. That was uh, Scott Coker. Yeah, Scott, yeah. yeah. You were also a WEC lightweight champion, right? That's right, that's right. Uh, explain to me the WEC, because the, did they end up getting bought by Strike Force? Oh, they got bought by the UFC eventually. Oh, so before it. it was like Tachi Palace and Lamore. So like, I think WEC was kind of considered maybe the state championship, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. Even though they said I was a world champ, I'll take that. But uh, yeah, WC was one of the biggest shows in California at the time. A lot of people fought in there. I know like Nick fought in there, uh, Nate fought in there, Gil Castillo. I saw Shawnee Carter fought in there. Shawnee Carter? Yeah, wow. Shane, Shane Carter. Carter. I'm old school, man. Yeah. I've, been, I've been around for a while. Um, yeah, so it was a really good show. And then eventually UFC bought it and they were like fighting in the Hard Rock Cafe or Hard Rock. Is that what it was in Las Vegas? Yeah. The Hard Rock out there. Wasn't Rob McCullough over there? Razor Rob was Razor there as Rob, well too. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I did a couple of few fights over there. Um, I won the championship. I bet, beat this crazy guy, Olaf Alfonso. Do you guys remember I him? I remember with the big nose. Yeah. 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 yeah, he broke his nose like 20 times yeah. across his face. Just I was the going. first guy to do it. He was undefeated at the time and he was like the local guy. He trained in the trees. Like he was, um, I don't know who he was, you know, but he was a Mexican guy climbing the trees, doing all kinds of weird stuff. They were, uh, they were pumping them up and everything. But um, that was one of my biggest fights, you know, 5-0. and oh, I think it was my fifth fight. And uh, I dumped him a few times, did some rampage slams on him and got on top. And, and he broke his nose. I was the first guy, I think, and to break his nose. Was he named after that dude from Sesame Street? What was that dude named with the long nose, Alfonso? Oh, yeah, Big Bird? I don't know. Oh, no. yeah, Alfonso. Alfonso. Yeah, 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 yeah. The guy, the no. guy with the long nose. You never watched Sesame Street? I, I think it was just a coincidence. Just I watched Bro, that was a crazy. Yeah, bro, that's a crazy. Bro, that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. That is actually a good comparison, though. Yeah, I like the way you put that together. Did you did you watch Did you watch Incredible. Sesame Street? No. Did you watch cartoons? You still watch I, cartoons? Though, right? I watched Sesame Street. Come on, who yeah, didn't I watch Sesame Street? Yeah, the blue guy. The blue, yeah, the long yeah. yeah, that's yeah, the same yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah same Alfonso. names. Yep. Yeah, right. that was him. Right, that was right. him. Damn. Hey, Luke, because you were a Strike Force champion as well. One thing I want to talk to you guys about: Do you feel like the Strike Force competition or like the 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 talent pool was so great that then UFC had to buy it, or do you feel like eventually just all the talent had to go to the UFC? Um, I mean, we, we were rivaling. We, we were on the doorstep of, of kind of rivaling the UFC. It was like, who's the major league? Um, we had Fedor and Josh Barnett, oh. but Josh Barnett kept pulling out of these big fights, and we were like, we're set to make these big pay per views. And Josh Barnett kept kept pulling out and screwing us over, and then <laughs> we ended up falling apart because that was our big payday. And then the Silicon Valley Group sold. They did like the kind of under the table kind of deal. It was kind of funky how it all worked. But then, and the UFC made a deal with Silicon Valley Group, and the backing pulled out, and we all got. Uh, brought over yeah I they think, like kind of picked the pieces right i think he's right i think that's like we were definitely rivaling them but i really believe is when scott cooker absorbed basically the whole heavyweight division he had barnett cormier uh alistair overeem verdun fader milienko at that moment it was like all the heavyweights were at strike force at that time and i really think that's what kind of made the move but i do think at that time we could all fought other champs you know during my reign over there i think it was like Frankie Edgar versus Gray Maynard was going down and I was fighting quite a bit and I would watch them and I'd like, I think I can beat them both, you know, wow. during my time. That's what was going on over there. Luke was fighting Jacare yep. at that time, you know, and I think, I don't know who the champ. Jacare, Tim Kennedy, Tim yeah. Jardine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Everybody. I mean, yeah. Cormier was, was steamrolling Bigfoot and all the boys. And was he, was he 205 or was he heavyweight then? Too? He was heavyweight. He was heavyweight. He was heavyweight. I would have, I would have loved to see him fight Fedor if they was in the same league. That would have yeah. been, been a fat man challenge of the, of the <laughs> <I> ages. <know. laughs> that would have been, been a great matchup. He, hey, he fought uh, Barnett though. And yeah. I think he was like the, the alternate for the heavyweight Grand Prix that they had over there. And Cormier jumped in and he ended up fighting uh, Barnett, I believe in the finals, right? Did he, he did he 
one. Yeah. He whooped him, dude. He, he, he beat got, Barnett. He did, yeah, I remember that big famous like dropped him on his head. Yes. And, I didn't yeah. see that. They had a war. I'll pull it up because it's a viral yeah. video. I never saw that yeah. one. Uh, Barnett said his hand was broken, I believe, uh. at that time. Yes, but nevertheless, to see, you know, you wanted to see two grapplers, like a really good grappler like Barnett. You're like, damn, this guy can wrestle, grapple. He's a catch wrestler. Let's see how he goes against Cormier. But man, Cormier was on fire that time. And just, I think he dominated. I never, I never knew they fought. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, how, how did Scott Coker get uh, Fedor if, if the UFC couldn't get him? Yeah, I, well, you know, he had a really good relationship <laughs> with Japan, you know, and I think that was his big sign. And I think that's when he, like, he owned, like, you know, he owned all the strike force, but I think that's when he brought a lot of people on board. Like, he brought some business partners on board and um to get fedor and i think that was a you know a way he got fedor and all that too but he had a great relationship because they're in japan fighting go I'll ahead do, i'll give you a little more to that yeah, give me more give me more <laughs> they gave half the company basically. Uh, <laughs> they basically gave him wait, half the what? revenue share like it was like literally about half the revenue wow. share to bring in fedor the the, the kgb the connections with all the russians and the, it was it was a big did, did you say KGB? it was a, yeah yeah, yeah. It was wait, a did big you just deal. say kgb did you just say Bro. you say K, did he say kgb he, he just said KGB. He said kgb he said kgb, he said KGB. <laughs> Hey, do you I know mean, what I, you just said on camera? I'm just saying that Fedor was run by some particular group of people, and then they they came in. You better hire protection. They strong armed yeah. a deal yeah. to give him Listen, literally before a half, you say half, too half much, the revenue. Before you say too much, I don't want to get you shot or something. But if you want to take that back, you're allowed to take that back. I'm not taking anything back. <laughs> <laughs> Yakuza runs pride. KGB. Like, I cannot hey, confirm any of this. Hey, I can't hey, confirm hey, any of this. Hey, Gilbert, the Yakuza love me though. <laughs> <laughs> he puts his hands up. KGB Yakuza. Hey, Gilbert, here's the uh, DC, the GGOs. DC slamming. Yeah. Uh, Josh Barnett. That's the same. Look at that. This Look is that. in Strike Force. Runs the pie. Look at that. Matt return. Wow. I love that. I love how he does that. He Bro. runs the pipe and then he shoots his rear arm all the way through, like a redrop almost. Bear, you like when they run the pipe, don't you? <laughs> and then he, and then I like the redrop because he flips him over and that's how he gets side control straight to the bat. Yeah, he did that at Hendo as well. Yeah, he did it to Hendo. I was he just did it to uh, Gus the same. Bro, how good is is DC's wrestling? I mean, everybody talks about it, but we've seen so many heavyweights. How good is his wrestling? I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. I think his wrestling for MMA is great too because he was able to like do that lead lead like snag really well which he did right there just he was he was more stout for his weight class coming in like mike tyson and they just snag that lead leg without doing a penetration shot you know just would grab it you know usually you got to penetrate hard and give you a good shoulder he just grab it run the pipe high crotch hey you better start yeah, wrestling. I, I, you better I, start wrestling. Excited, I, I like i like i like, I like that <laughs> offense because i need that because every time i try to come in with the penetration i get jabbed i break my nose it's run the it's run the pike not the pipe it's just take it easy the pike p-i-k-e he says pipe because he's into that i was saying the pipe dude i thought what? it was but it's pipe. No, hey, but I, I, all these what? years what? But anyway, that that takedown I think is one of the most effective yeah. takedowns in MMA. You see, Kamaru Usman gets yeah. a lot. It's just a sneaky little pull of the leg. People like take so much commitment and energy comes into like full double leg. Just take that thing, a little, a little something like. And and you've talked about that a lot on podcasts before, Luke uh, Gilbert. Jake Shields talks about on his podcast and on on our podcast with Rampage about your relationship with him. And then you jumped in on that pod, and then you bounced out. So I appreciate you coming back for the second. He's this is his return. Yeah, yeah, this right. is the yeah, double. Yeah, I can count. <laughs> I know that. Really? I'm trying to really just just pipe down over there, Pike. So <laughs> so one thing I want to one thing I want to know is how did the relationship actually begin? And give me the actual thorough story this time. Yeah, man, Jake has like become a like a friend to a best friend to a brother, you know, and to a, a sensei, a master out there. He really brought me under his wing. Uh, so initially, I went to SF State to wrestle, and I and I enjoyed it my freshman year. But my second year, Jake Shields transferred over there from Cuesta, and he was already, uh, you know, training. I didn't know that, but he's like, hey, I, you know, he actually came to me and was like, hey, Gil, you uh, you want to go out and party? You hang out? I was like, hell yeah, let's go. You know, and uh, we hung out. We had a good time. And then he was explaining to me that he did MMA fights, and I was like, I seen every UFC, bro. I haven't seen you on it you damn know? That's, you know? a, that's a low jab yeah bro. i know well, that's what i did you know i was too i wasn't too sure this is like the year 2000 and then i was like let's go and i try to wrestle him and he put me in a noodle tapped me out like 10 times and i was like all right i want to learn this stuff but he brought like these vhs's over that's the old school day vhs yeah. and he had like the king of the cage gladiator challenge and he was fighting and he was whooping people's asses and i really looked up to that i thought that was awesome man i was a big fight fan i was watching you on sheer dog my second year in college uh oh. jesse taylor you know Jesse Taylor, yeah. JT Bills. He actually yeah. went to SF State. He was a freshman. I was a sophomore there, and you know I remember him on Sheer Dog. All these guys were watching Eager about Chanchin, who you beat. Oh, you know yeah. Sakuraba, yourself, Vanderlei. Do you remember all those highlights they had on there? Like if you didn't want to fight MMA after watching those, then I don't know what. You know I don't know what kind of wrestler, you know martial artist you were. Uh, but anyways, uh, Jake took me to Caesar Gracie's. He made an alliance with Caesar Gracie out there, and. 
he took me in and was training and um i was training with him for probably for like a good six months and one of my roommates moved out he moved in and i couldn't ditch practice after that and uh yeah the rest was history man it took me to caesar gracie's and the journey continued and world champions together and he's been a big brother and a, and a coach you know till today that's great you know I, i've been seeing him a lot on tiktok lately he's with that gg33 guy a lot right now. Have you seen him? Who's the GG3? <laughs> the, the, the guy that knows about numerology. Oh, okay. I don't know his name. Okay. But I, see, I, I think his page is like GG33. You know what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. They have yeah. crazy videos. They're talking about religion. They're talking about like the world. Oh, you're talking about numerology. Yeah, like, no, that, that fa that's it, fascinating. It, I don't understand it, but it's yeah, fascinating. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's good to look into. Uh, I want to... Is, is, is that Jake's um, podcast or is it the other guy's podcast? No, Jake started his own podcast now. And what's really cool about Jake is, you know, in our world, I'm like, I know Jake as a badass fighter, but now he's becoming just this, I don't know what Politician. he is. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah, Jake, is, yeah, yeah, Jake yeah. will say it all. He, he'll stand up for, he the, no for, the, right, for the right yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, I, and that's actually why he's awesome because he's not like, you know, right, right now you feel like, you, like you're with the red or blue. It's very gang related, you know, yeah. in the politics, right? And it's like, you got to stay with your side. But Jake is like, He's a man of principle and like he'll be, you know, he'll just what he believes. You know, yeah. the, maybe the right believes something and all of a sudden the right believes something else. He's like, no, no, this yeah. is what I believe. And and I think that's why people respect him for that. I have so many stories with Jake that he, <laughs> he does that. Like we were like in line at a bank one time and, you know, someone was trying to argue that Bruce Lee could beat him, you know, and he like will have the debate with him. Like, who cares, Jake? Yeah. Just let this idiot think he could, you know, but he's out there like a man of principle, like, no way he can beat me, you know? And <laughs> he called out a bartender one time that said he won purple belt Pan Am's. Like, no way you did. I was there, da, da, da. Just like, <laughs> it just made him look like a fool. Anyways, he's a man of principle when it comes to that stuff. And I, I do respect, admire. Yeah, oh, of course, that. man. Are you voting? I think that America is divided and the last thing we should be talking about is who we're voting for, but what we should be voting for is the actual topics. Cause I feel America has been so one-sided. We're always just me versus you, him versus that, race versus this. And it's like, dude, let's just make sure that there's no bums on the street. People have food and people have insurance. Let's start with that. Can we can we FaceTime Jake and ask him who he thinks we vote for? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that, that would be a two hour Jake, combo. I, I, when he yeah. was on the podcast, he would not let, bro, he is very, He's very opinionated with factual data behind it. It's an amazing conversation. Yeah. I'll give him that. Yeah, he'll do his homework, right? When yeah. you're like, hey, you know, he has data to support it. So if you're trying to have a debate with them, you better go do your homework or listen to your- You got to respect <clears throat> it. Oh, absolutely. He knows yeah. the shit. Oh, yeah. he knows the shit 100%. Dude. I mean, Rampage, you're, you're the same way when we talk about politics. You have a very unique view. Like you don't talk about it in public, but you have a unique view on what we should be looking at and what we shouldn't. Yeah, but I agree with you. I think it's, it divided our country. And, absolutely. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not right. Even, you know, even families, it divided families and friends. So, it, you know, yeah. it shouldn't be that deep. I think it's a shame because there's a lot of things we all agree on, but we just talk about things we disagree. And it'd be great to see like two leaders like throw a bone. Like, yeah, I agree with that a little bit. Let's kind of compromise, meet in the middle and, and talk about those things. But I feel like they just emphasize on the things that we're extremely divided on. And they're yeah. just like, that's how they win their elections and how people do it. But there's a lot we all agree on. I think the most of the world is is moderate or in the middle you know we don't have time for all that extreme stuff but i think most people do just want their home you know nice little family you know just some basic stuff and i think it's it's pretty simple out there but we focus on the things we don't agree on so much but it'd be nice to yeah. see a debate happen and then i agree let's yeah. work together because i mean that's what we need right that's right. and and that's the main and not to go too deep down this rabbit hole but that's the main concept is that there's so much that is needed that's very basic like Hey, instead of sending money to every country, let's just make sure our people are taken care of first and then we can worry about the rest of the world. But it's a hard thing because then everybody's like, well, it's our job to police. The big people at the top should police. So it's a whole debate. Yeah, one yeah, thing yeah. I want to talk about, though, when we talk about people being divided, one thing that is not divided is the scrap pack. That's what's Over up. the years, you guys have stayed so united in terms of not fighting each other, the way you train with each other, the debates, the arguments. You, you don't hear a lot of drama between your group of friends. That name is synonymous with being like the bad boys of MMA, the true bad boys of MMA, like guys that literally will fight anytime, anywhere. Me and Rampage always talk about Nate Diaz and the way he is and kind of the, I, I would just say like their aura, the way you guys have this aura, right? To MMA. Can you man, talk? they real. They yeah. real. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's 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 been a pleasure, man. I would say, man, the fight gods put us together, you know, and and people ask like, oh, what is it or how is it to us? It's just like our human nature, right? Like you're supposed to be loyal to your homies, right? You're supposed to have their back. And uh, and I think there's a certain type of bond going on when you're beating the shit out of each other, but you can high five afterwards and be homies afterwards. I think a lot of gyms, they beat each other up and then afterwards they're like upset at each other, you know, but we really push ourselves to the limits, support each other you know, shout each other out after he fights. We hung out together, you know, like-minded people. We all started from the bottom, homegrown white belts together. 
all homegrown white belts grew up together and um, and became a team, you know. So some of this stuff that seems like so like interesting to people, how we did it just seemed like human nature to us, you know, and we support each other to this day. You know, jump in first, ask questions second. It's just kind of been it. And we're not always right. Sometimes we're wrong, but you always support each other, right? Isn't that like dope? Like maybe we're not always right, but you know you have your boys back. That's that's my boy right there. And of course you earn that. It's not like you get to be a jerk completely, you know what I mean? But like, there's there's a lot of respect earned along the way, and you know, back your home. Me, first, me on, ask on, on the outside looking in and getting to know all you guys throughout the years, I can tell like they real and they and they they all got mad love for each other, and it's like no no jealousy. Like mm -hmm. sometimes you training with people and stuff is jealousy. Look, look at um, Tito and 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 Tank Abbott, like they used to train <laughs> together, but they hate each other. You know Incredible. that's that's why they grew up. And, and, they hate each other. Yes. You think? Tank Abbott and Tito hate each other? It proved them when Tank Abbott came here and talked talk shit about Tito for two well, hours. that's just your opinion. I don't know. I'm no, just no, wondering. Trust me. <laughs> I, I know. And, and, uh, Nate <laughs> DM'd me last night the clip of Tank Abbott going off on Tito. <laughs> and I woke up I woke up this morning, and right from I went to the gym, I'm laughing at <laughs> he's yeah, in that clip. Like, yeah, uh, I forgot all about that. Uh, yeah. you, you it's know? interesting because because Gilbert and Nate were at the top of the, the heap on both their weight class, you know, 155 together. So obviously he was the man in strike force, and Nate was still coming up and then and then they crossed over, got in the same division. So it's it's funny how you guys managed it and kept kept so tight over the years through that. Never had a problem. Yeah, yeah. no, it has been great. Yeah, walk yeah. us through that. That's actually an amazing point, Luke. Like, yeah. how did how did you guys manage that relationship? Gilbert, yeah. Gilbert was the man. I mean, they real at, at a point like Nate yeah, was but, still on his way up. But you've said it so many times. The reason why gyms fall apart, people get jealous. Yeah. I really want to know Especially why like, there's no jealousy. only in the certain weight classes. You know what I mean? Like like we had to manage DC and Kane because Kane DC was a heavyweight. He's a better heavyweight. But when he came in, Kane was a beast at the time, and he was running the division. So when you know the plan was to him to come in and make the the, the lower weight class the kind of the rule rule all weight classes, we could all do it. Like it was Kane, DC, me, and down the line. It's only a certain yeah. type of. I'm and sorry. Then, then, no, so go, ahead. go on with you though. But from from what I know, it's only a certain type of people that can train together and be in the same weight class and and still have their brotherhood and and be happy for each other and not be jealous against each other because you know the guy that started me to fight, me and him was. Uh, in the same weight class, and I and I made it, and he didn't, and some jealousy came in there. You know what I'm saying? So I know I know how it, how it works. Yeah, no, that's real. You know, and again, you know, we're lucky because of that. And you know, even Jake went up to 185s because you know we had Nick at 170s in Strike Force, and Nate was able. I mean, Jake was able to get the 185 final championship. And and you're right, Nate was just doing the Ultimate Fighter and coming up together, but. We were the perfect training partners for each other. I was wrestler based. He was jujitsu based. And because of him, I had like the best jujitsu defense. And because of him, he was tapping out wrestlers and we'd get at it, you know, because of them, I learned how to box better and, you know, get that high level conditioning and, and you know, that nonstop pace that they get, that they get. But yeah, man, it was, I don't know. Everyone makes it seem like it's so hard, but it was just like, we had a brotherhood, you know, yeah. and we had each other's back. And to me, you know, people need to write, read books about it, like how to be a good friend or something, how to be loyal. It's like, what are you talking about, man? That's your boy. They bleed with you. They back you up. It's right. like, how, how do you turn your back on your brother like that? I'm not saying it doesn't happen. And, and it um, happens. Yeah, you know, you know, it happens and stuff. And it's a, it's a shame. It happened to it's, me. Yeah. I, if if my friend would have made it, I would have been happy for him, and I would have been there helping him train, and and I just been happy for it. It would have sucked that I didn't make it, mm -hmm. but I would have kept trying, and I would have been there for him helping him train, and I would I would have said like, hey man, like, oh, yeah, pull me up, yeah. You know, that's what you do. And that's and I think we do that to this day. Like we're still lifting each other up. We're still like better together, you know. And and obviously it's Nate's time right now. He's on fire, you know, and um and he's the man and stuff, but he's he's like super cool. Always bringing him and Jake are doing a seminar soon, you know, and you know, Jake's hitting me up to do stuff and you know, we're all still family. And Nick getting back in there soon. Yeah, Nick's getting back in December seventh and everything. I'd love to see more of him. Uh I saw him a little bit during his last fight camp, but I'd love to see him out here and and with the team a little bit more. But yeah, he's looking to get in December 7th is what I'm seeing. Would you have him train? I'd always help Nick train, of course. He's a brother, whatever ha whatever helps him, you know, whatever he'd like. Whatever but you guys chooses. not training in the same place no more? Yeah, right now we're not. Right now we're not. I'm not too sure where he's at. I think he was in Texas. And uh, and he did come back a little bit um, before his last fight mm -hmm. with Robbie Lawler. And he was staying in San Francisco. And Who's he with right now? Who's around him? He was training in Texas when Gilbert was here. That's when we called yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I couldn't, Nate, I couldn't even Nate's tell. Nate's not helping him out? Nate, uh, they're close at all? Or oh, no, they're, 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 they're brothers. They love each other. You know, I just think, you know, Nick happens to be on his own path, uh, a yeah. different place right now. And, and, and if he comes back, dude, like, yeah, we're all here waiting for him. You know, we all, he, we love Nick, dude. Come on back. We'd love to train with them and get him in there. And I think Nick in a, in a training camp is awesome.
He's fighting uh, Vincente Luque. Yeah, Vincente yeah. Luque. In December. That's great. Hopefully they just bang it out, you know? And I know, like, he fought Robbie. Like, I appreciated that fight. I know he came up short. But from what we just saw, like, seven minutes, it was seven minutes of awesome action. And, you know. That's I, what it's all about at the end of the day. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, I think so. A lot of people always wonder who is, like, the boogeyman in the gym amongst your guys' crew because mm. you guys didn't do a lot of drama or gossip. You guys never talked to the PR, the press. You guys never went to the tabloids and kind of ran your mouth on who was beating up who in the gym. So when we asked our Jackson, Pos Jackson Podcast Discord, what did they want to know from you this time around? So you want said, him to run his mouth? They said, you want him to run his mouth on that They said, they said <laughs> you want him to be like sought out, uh, sought they out, said, they said can, the you, can you just give us some inside yeah. info on how the training sessions went? God, because we've yeah, heard yeah. about the infamous door getting locked you oh, guys yeah. were all in the gym. I don't know the full story. I heard it off air. I told him I wouldn't say it. I won't say who said it, but someone from Scrap Pack. But whatever, I guess the door got locked. You guys were supposed to fight, but you could break us down. Yeah, man, if you're asking who the boogeyman in the gym was for us and who kind of really set the, the tone was a guy by the name of Dave Terrell. Like Dave Terrell, uh, you know, he was, uh, I believe, a 185er. He fought for the UFC title. He lost uh, to Evan Tanner, but he knocked out Matt Linlin, Matt knocked out Scott Smith. And he was at a different time. Um, where he had opened a gym and was like generating good money and UFC wasn't paying him a crap load of money. It was a different era. So I think he went to that path. I wish he stayed fighting, but to me, he was one of the best ever. He took third in Abu Dhabi's, didn't get a point scored on him. Um, he beat a lot of great guys. And even to this day, I go train with him. He's like the boogeyman to me. And he's like one of those big guys, like 260 who moves like a lightweight. And I have to yell tap when I go with he's them. He's 260 Wait, now? Motherfuckers yeah, 260. I don't know. But maybe I'm sorry, Dave. I think he's maybe the, 230 or something. Uh, Dave what? Terrell. Jeez. But he's yoked and big. And, you know, oh, and, and Dave Terrell. But he's, he's talented, like, man. I was I was always like, you got to keep your eye on Dave Terrell, especially in my division. I was like, this guy's, yeah. this guy's nasty. You trained with him? or you? I've never trained with him, but uh, but I just, I just seen him on his way up. You yeah, know? he still. I was like, me. I was like, kind of on my way up. He was like, he was right there. The I top. heard, I heard his name before, but I, I, you know how, how, how I am. I can't put a face to it, but I'm jealous of him because he knocked out um, Matt Lennon. And I always wanted to knock that dude out. Yeah, you beat Matt Lennon. I though, beat right? him by yeah. decision, but I wanted to knock him out so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he cl he clipped him and knocked him out like in uh, like like literally the beginning of the fight that got him the title shot. Wow. Yeah. What yeah. what what uh what league? What, what? That was the UFC. UFC. He yeah. did that in the UFC. Wow. I and he that. lost to Evan Tanner for the title, right? He did. He lost to yeah. Evan Tanner for the UFC title. Evan Tanner kind of broke broken. Yeah. 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 Just had a bad showing that day, and um, yeah, it was unfortunate. But fuck, dude, we fought for the UFC title. Not many people could say that. You know, that's amazing accomplishment. You know, I, I used to get Evan Tanner mixed up with that guy who had one chest. Oh yeah, yeah. Who was that guy? You Trey, Trey, uh, Trey Miller. Trey. Oh yeah, oh, God, you remember yeah, that guy? Yeah, I know yeah. you're talking about. He's now, like yeah. UFC one game with yeah, Trey yeah. Miller. Something. He was tough. What? What? Whatever happened to him? You I know? don't. Well, fuck. I mean, that was like UFC two. You know? No, yeah, no. Yeah. It was after that. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. You pull that up. I want to. I want to see that. Can you wow. find out what the one yeah. chest Trey? What? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Here's the Matt Lindlin knockout. I oh, think with Dave Rob, the soul assassin. This is. You got to get Matt out there quick because he smells like a fucking. Man, oh, that's me and Diego right oh, there. Oh, that's you and Diego. Oh. Yeah, we. Oh, we got to talk oh. about that one next. That was like I was trying to work uh, my head kicks right there, and that's yeah. that's what happened right at the gate. I was there at this fight. This was fun. This was a fun one. Yeah, Ooh. man, it's as, awesome. As we, pull, as we pull that one up, I gotta I gotta talk about this Diego Sanchez one because this is like one of the best highlights I think the UFC's seen. I mean, this fight was incredible. Yeah, it's amazing because, you know, I'm part of the history books because of it. You know, when it comes to MMA, it's fun because, you know, people will post this and they'll be like, I'm inspired today. Or, you know, they'll put some I, video. I think Gil inspired these little thug shorts back in the day. The first the first to rock these little mini shorts. Yeah, I didn't want to wear the tights, man. I used to wear flower <laughs> shorts. Everyone had the, like, bad boy Valley Tudo shorts. I was like, I'm not going to wear those. You know? I'm not going to wear those bad boys. But I like to tailor the shorts a little bit there. Yeah, a lot of people talk about this fight. They talk about round two. They talk about round three. They talk about just the all-out war when Diego's blood is just coming out of his left eye and, and kind of like everything you were landing right here, that cut above his eye. Do you remember this fight? Do you remember a lot oh, of Oh, of course I do. It? Of course. I remember hitting him and with everything I got and him just being Diego. Look how crazy he is, man. I was like, this guy will not go down, you know? And uh, when they had that cut, I was like, all right, they're going to stop it. Awesome. But they didn't. Uh, I'm happy though, you know, again, like I said, I'm in the history books. I just did UFC Noche and they did like a whole tribute, a really cool highlight of it. And you're like, that's what the Mexican fighting spirit is. I was like, this is awesome. And I, I feel like it's a little bit of that, you know, that Diego Corrales fight. You see that, that where he gets knocked down and comes up. Yeah. It's like kind of motivation. I feel like we're the MMA version of it. And it's, it's great to be in the history books because of it. And uh, yeah, man, good moment for the career right there. 
What, yeah, it was a great, what's was happening great with you and the Scrap Packs cardio that you guys were able to just keep going no matter what? I feel like Nate well, those, is the same those way. Those guys were the first guys who were really doing the triathlons and uh, and running distance. And and when I first box sparred them, I was like, I thought I was in shape, but I, I realized I, I kind of wasn't. And they were really voluming guys. So just training with them did that. And then um, Jason Manley. Do you guys know Jason Manley? He's the a local guy one? here. Yeah, the black dude. And he's uh, he ran for UC Berkeley. And he's like, you want to get in shape, Gil? I was like, hell yeah. He let's go through the track. And he had me doing 400s and 300s. And I felt like there was no sprint harder than a 400. So when I get prepared for fights, like a big thing I do with my fighters to this day or what I do is I do 400s, <coughs> 200s, 300s. And I do like sometimes 800s. To me, those are like the toughest sprints. Anything over like that is not a sprint, right? You could sprint one whole lap, but if you're like, oh, I sprint, well, you could sprint a mile too and guys can keep a hard pace, but you, you taper down, right? Yeah. So like we're sprinting a hard 400 and that's the only time I get like, my legs are sore, my my, my butt cheeks are sore from running. The 400s know? is two laps, right? One lap, 800 is two laps. Okay, okay. And I sometimes I'll do that too, an 800 for time. You're like, all right, if I can break three minutes or if I can get a minute on my 400, you know, I know some guys easily break that. But I tell my fighters, hey, hit under like 110 or something like that. You're doing good. 125 is like you're not really sprinting. You know, you got to like you need to find that. I'm breaking 110, one minute, you know, really fast people under that. And that to, to me, that's like the first minute of a fight. Bro, nothing can really replicate that. A lot of fighters don't understand that you have to sprint in MMA. A lot, I, I can tell like I was watching um, my, my, my friend AJ McKee fight uh, this weekend. I could tell like, man, I could be wrong, but it looked like he hadn't been doing sprints. Mm -hmm. Sprints, mm -hmm. sprints bring out <clears throat> a weakness in you like nothing else. Yeah, I dread it's it. It's like it's it's the worst thing in the week. Oh, one, one day a week, you're like, what's wrong, Lou? You got hurt ball <coughs> from no, Columbia. Just, Columbia. Damn, <laughs> sorry. Hey, damn. Excuse me. <laughs> what happened down there in Columbia? Traveling, Luke? Hey, traveling. <laughs> but no, but sprinting, <clears throat> sprinting is the worst. There's nothing oh, worse. Yes, it's like oh, yeah. scary. You're, you're doing 10, 14, Like you're praying for ten. Oh hell yeah. You get fourteen sprints. You're like. <laughs> just, just, just panicking all week. Oh, it's, yeah. it's nothing like it. I was excited for sparring. It makes the man out of you. Yeah, I'd be, dr I'd be dreading sprints. I'd be like, oh, I love, I love sparring, but I'd be dreading this. I go there and I just feel that like in the stomach, like, oh, I hate this, you know. And honestly, you don't have to even go too long, you know, like a warm up a mile and like sprint, like you know, mile to a mile to two miles of sprints or something, four hundreds, hundreds, two hundreds and stuff, because like you, you're out, like your legs are out, you're done, and you give yourself the proper rest too, like you do the the four hundred. And then you let your body recover completely. You don't do a 400 and then like do another one in a minute later because you're you're not there. You do a 400, you wait three minutes and you're like, oh, I'm back. And then you do it again. You know what I mean? Because you got to let yourself charge up. So that's how you get ready to have that hard output. And then later on, you'll do the sprint jog, sprint jog, and we'll do like intervals of it. But that's how I get ready. I'm like, okay, if I can replicate the first minute of fight, if someone wants to go toe to toe and we want to start pushing, Let's do a 400. And then after that, everyone's tired. But, you know, it's in the fight, you're like active rest. Active, you look like you're like not tired, but you're like, oh, God damn, please don't come. Don't come over here. Don't come over here. <laughs> don't, don't come. <laughs> God, I keep, I, everything in wrestling is horrible, dude. Everything in yeah. wrestling is, I can't, I can't even talk. But, I, but I mean, gonna, it's known that you guys have incredible cardio. I mean, Nate Diaz talks about it. How And a lot of people, obviously, who watch him can understand that this guy just can keep going and going. Nick was the same way. Yeah. Did you guys have a lot of sparring sessions where it just kept going for days and you guys, you know, last man leaving the gym? Yeah, we had sparring sessions, but we kind of like, like we'd, we'd go long rounds sometimes in grappling and do that. But again, like I'm not training to fight like 40 rounds. You know what I mean? A lot of guys are like, oh, I trained four hours today and I sparred, you know, 25 rounds. I was like, well, maybe you didn't spar very hard. You know, like I'm like, let's get in there and let's like, we're going to go pet up full throttle 15 minutes because that's how you get ready for a fight right if you do oh, i did four rounds but you're like tit for tat tit for tat you're gonna fight like that and then when someone comes at you to fight you're like i'm not ready for that pace i i, I trained for tit for tat you know but if you train for like full throttle and you go full throttle on someone and there's like some like at your at your peak when you're like you know prep i would say with preparation comes confidence you know and when you're prepared and you look across and you're like i'm gonna go 25 minutes full throttle and I think you'll fall first, not based on like skill, but just on like, I'm down and endure whatever, and I'm going to push you and I'm going to break you and I'm going to see who breaks first, you know, and they know it sometimes they're like, damn it, this guy's ready to come and they're ready to take whatever. And, and I think that's like a big weapon. And what's amazing about that is like, like courage is something you have to have, of course, but like endurance and endurance is very hard to get, but very easy to get. It's not like this hard science behind it. It's just like, you got to go to the track when you fucking dread it. And you got to do it, you know what I mean? But it's easy to say, oh, I'm, I'm hurt today. I don't want to do that part, you know?
Bear, yeah. how many times have you thought to yourself, oh man, this guy's about to come? <laughs> Like, like fall apart in the ring? Yeah. I mean, when I when I spar- Do you work like, harder? Well, yeah, I mean, I work when you harder. you feel that. Energy. When I feel he's ready to collapse, like Luke put me through some sparring sessions, and I feel oh, like what? I... He oh. put me through some tell, sparring tell, tell us about this, Luke. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Before you went to Columbia, you All said, right. get in here, let's work. No, but I'm just saying, like, you know, you got to chase the good. <laughs> you got to chase the energy when the energy's right. Gilbert and, and Jake used to come down a lot to AK, and uh-huh. I would go up there when I would like lack training partners. I knew I needed it. I would go up there to the bay and work with the boys. But they used to come down. We used to push each other all the time. I yeah, I, I before, remember being before at, things got too heated. I remember when he was like at AKA, and he was like like the like a newer guy from like oh, who's book. the who's the newer guy from Santa Cruz AKA. And this is like when Koscheck was there and all those. Like Jake would take me down there like to get the sparring. And usually I wouldn't go down there, you know. And I kind of learned because I went I, I sparred Josh Thompson, ended up fighting him. Josh, yeah. yeah, and I was like, oh, I probably should, you know. But it, like Jake was so good like sometimes he had to like go other places to get work you know and like for me he whooped my ass every day so like i didn't have that problem you know uh but anyways i'd go in there and they they have sparring and like you know there was i think it was like swick was there at the time cost but there's like ogs over there and then like luke was new out there and he was just this wild twaekwondo guy and he was beating <laughs> beating people and i can't even say like don't go with him he's gonna <laughs> hurt you he's gonna hurt you and beat people <laughs> up over there you know and then of course he became a champ and one of the best ever of That's course start but- t- taekwondo no, everyone thought I was Taekwondo. I was just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. That's no, what, I was all yeah. jiu-jitsu wrestling based, yeah. but I was like, I and, love, he, and he did the inverted triangle. Trick. You know, yeah. you'd always hit the, you'd hit a shot on him. He'd sprawl and he'd get you in this inverted triangle. And I, and I, I remember, I remember betting on you against against Weidman. You beat Weidman, right? Yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, we're gonna, you know, I knew you were gonna win that fight, dude. Maybe some money yeah. that day. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Everybody does think Luke is a karate kid or a taekwondo kid. That's like the third time I've heard that. He is kicks. though. He is. Because it's kicks. Because it's Man, kicks. I just like John Claude Van Damme. Yeah. I was like, John Claude is my guy. Van Damme weekend, man. That inspired me out here too. WWE and Van Damme. Those I are got, my- I got a question about y'all cardio. Um, do you guys um, use swimming? Did y'all swim? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not a lot, but I, I was like. I grew up in Santa Ana over here. And uh, when I was young, I was like a lifeguard at the pools and you had to learn how to swim. And my dad did some swimming when he was young in the ocean and, and that. And uh, yeah, I started swimming and doing that like you know, when I'm injured or more for like recovery and just to stay active and mix it up a little bit. But I wasn't as religious as it as like Nick and Nate were with it. They do like triathlons and and stuff like that. And I've done like two of those like nick took me actually one time to do a try for fun oh. and i remember we did like i went to stockton and like i was like i'm gonna do one like somewhere around there and i like met up we did like a crash course like at one in the morning like through the streets of stockton showing me how to dismount the bike and everything for fun for fun <laughs> yeah like i don't know i was just getting a crash course yeah and i did the, i wanted to go yeah. feel what it was to do the workout you know just i was like racing myself to complete it i did the try for fun which is like a half triathlon mm-hmm. and you just race the person in front of you like there's like a young girl biking i'm just trying to catch her she's kicking my ass and yeah it was a good time but uh but yeah those things are great and i think mm-hmm. there were trendsetters on that and i think everyone does that jake was one of the fe- first vegetarians and he kind of influenced them influenced them to become like pescatarians and all that as well and and i think they're like some of the pioneers jake they're not vegan all. uh i think they're pescatarian like they, they're pretty damn like you know people will be like oh i'm vegan but they eat like not very good yeah. they're like pescatarian meaning they eat like fish or and stuff like that but yeah. they still eat mostly clean things like yeah. they'll eat eggs and everything yeah my, my son swears they're vegan and i tell him because my son's a vegan i'm mm-hmm. like bro i've eaten dinner with them before they're yeah. not vegan i think they'll go vegan for a little bit but i would even say like i know they're not uh like vegan vegan but you'd be more impressed with their diet yeah. than like some guy that says oh i'm you know you've seen vegetarians who yeah. just eat pizza every day and you're yeah. like you know they're like kind of fat okay. and you're like okay i know yeah. jake I know jake, jake, jake eats cheese right jake, yeah, oh, yeah. Jake, jake's yeah. always eating his cheese yeah, yeah. you're, you're not cheese. vegan no, 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 i'm no a way. vegetarian yeah i bet you are baby. <laughs> 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 me too <laughs> 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 I, bet you are, I don't know what you guys talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's why you go there coughing up hair uh, <laughs> Fair yeah. I'll, be, I'll be gone for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> he, he was with Craig Jones in Columbia for a week, dude. Who knows what they were eating down there? Oh, he was there. He was there with you again this time. This week or a couple weeks ago? I forgot. I don't know. He's uh, been gone for four weeks. That's why we've been missing our co-co-host. Yeah, he's been on a right. long vacation. He had yeah. a birthday. I'm <clears throat> just clearing my <clears> throat. Yeah, excuse me. We'll move on from that one. I, 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 I'm sorry. Hold on. I wasn't finished with the young champion. Well, then please continue. Which young champion? They're both champions. But he's you're younger than him, right? I don't know. I'm 42. No. 42 now. Got me, baby. Got me. Yeah. Oh, oh my damn. damn. How old are you? I look young, though, I guess. You he just looks 39. You just, you just had a birthday. How old did you turn? He's 39. Uh, he doesn't want to discuss it. That's oh, hilarious, on, dude. I'm 40, <laughs> baby. I'm going to hit my 40s. Yeah. I'm running. I'm running deep. Oh, wow. Let's go. So, what are you, 55? 60? 65? 
70, just tell me when it's off. I'm, I'm 46. Rampage, you're looking good. You're yeah, looking you look, good. that's the best you've ever looked. Yeah, I haven't, dyed, I haven't dyed my beard in a while. You don't need to now, uh, bro. Yeah, you weigh yeah. 190. Nah, so continue, I'm, please. Yeah, I want to ask because uh, now that I'm getting older and I'm still fighting, I haven't laid it down yet, I can't sprint no more. So mm. I'm thinking, what what do you think I, I should do instead of sprints? Is it the aerodyne or, or swimming? Yeah, I think aerodyne's great. Or if, if can you run uphill? I haven't. Yeah, I, I probably could. No, no, I'm, 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 with, I'm with you now. Like, like the knees hurt. The yeah. knees hurt, dude. Oh, yeah, the knees man. hurt. So, so what I started doing is I run uphill, you know. And then I just, and also like I don't look at the time anymore. Yeah. I just, I let my heart rate tell me. I don't, I'm not, I don't look at these like 27 year old times what I used to get. You yeah. know, I don't look at those times. I don't even look at the time. I just, my, my inner clock tells me when my. My sprint is at full level, and then I know my my, my heart tells me when I'm recovered to go again. Yeah, I, I say aerodyne, row, row, row machine, and let me. Oh yeah, I heard about the row. Yeah, machine, yeah, and then like there's nothing like also like, hey, let me hold the pads for you, and you have the interval like you're hitting pads to the to the aerodyne to putting the rope uh, the the band around. It. Shoot, 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 sprawl, get a fresh guy on you. Maybe not live. Maybe you just hit double legs, drop them, double leg other guy. You know, just like. Just get the heart rate going and have someone make sure you keep it going, you know? Yeah. When was the last time you fought? I didn't fight. I think 2019 was the last time I fought. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. You know, it's been a long time. And, man, it was a long road. I think my first fight was in 2001. First two in one night was like an IFC, amateur, whatever. It was fun. So it was it was a long road. Yeah. Are you planning on doing any boxing? Or I would love to do that. I would love to do that. I stay in shape and I'm like thinking about it now you know i know there's opportunities out there and i'd love to do that i think i could still bang with some i think towards the end i was getting a little fatigued and i took a lot of leg kicks so i can't really like i don't like to get kicked in the leg i like to box and um yeah and i think i was catching paycheck <laughs> got yeah, a couple of those that? Knot, that knot that? you had yeah pull yeah. that knot up pull that, Dude, that thing is oh i man. remember i remember fighting uh when i was fighting benson henderson for the title um i remember joe because i had all these previous injuries and he was naming them in the fight he's like oh i think he separated or hurt his shoulder and i was like no nah, it's like a jake separated he's like oh look at that contusion on his shin i was like oh when i fought masvidal that happened and it's like I had this bubble that never went away till I fought Jeremy. Then he kind of like kicked it and popped it. Or oh, shit. no, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. trust me. I dealt with the same thing from you. Well, remember, yeah, I fractured. Oh, you had, yeah, that's and right. It, and it just haunted me. And I had to wear like a sleeve. Once you have a real bad shin injury, it just it dictates everything. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And, and you, it just your leg fills up with fluid. Yeah, that's, just, it, that's exactly what it it's is. It's fucking yeah. gross. How you but get rid of that fluid? I, bro, I, I, the UFC advised me to do a surgery because I would get this like cystic fluid that would fill up in a hematoma and it would. My my leg would spit out. It's nasty. Like all, oh, it's just continuously spit out. And so, they they came up with a stupid surgery. They they split me down the blade of my shin and almost ruined my. I mean, pretty much ruined my career Fuck. for for a long time. Yeah, it, yeah. it fucked me over for that years. Sucks, for man. years, couple years. I had so much blood. Every time, like I'd stand up, the pain of the blood running down would hurt. Oh, damn. and then I'd sit I'd sit down, and the blood would run back the other way, and I could just be like, oh gosh and that was like for like three weeks or four weeks till like it went away but i was always like my coach back in the day be like what do i do with the leg kick check he's like right hand at the same time right when they throw leg kick right hand so over the years i would just drop the right hand but eventually i i, I like i don't want to give anyone credit like they did it to me i think it's an accumulation over just like you know taking too much leg kicks and everything and i'd rather like my favorite my favorite fight show would be we call it we call it bgl boxing grappling league like no no leg kicks no knees no just just hands and, and grappling and ground and pound that'd be my favorite i don't know some scrap if, pack shit right yeah there. i love that right there but um but yeah that was so that you was, wouldn't do karate combat i would do anything for the right price bro you know in terms of combat you know in terms of combat i do anything for the right price and i stay in shape and i think you know i think i like I'm in a giving phase in my life. Like I have a bunch of fighters now and I'm working on this fight show and stuff too. But I, I think I like earned to give to myself a little bit too. And uh, I'd love to have another fight, the right fight. I would do, yeah, I would do it for sure. Yeah, because it's hard to just walk away from it. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I'm 46, Challenges. I don't, want, yeah, I don't yeah. want to walk away from it. Challenge yeah. is just what makes us, you know, drives us. Absolutely. Everything. You, guys, you guys are all Try to find something that pushes you and challenges you and tests you, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Within <clears> reason. Within reason, you got to understand your... your you know, your dimensions and your capabilities, but mm -hmm. I think we all still have it in us for I, sure. I think you said it right there, right? Like towards the end, like, you know, I was in the last stretch of my year and they're like, oh, I fought Barboza when he was like the top, you know, I fought, you know, Arnold Allen, my last fight. Now he's like going up there, you know, like <clears throat> the main thing is I want to fight someone that's, you know, like someone I fought before, you know, or someone in my, you know, my era. I think yeah. that's what, that'd be important to me. Do, do you have an opinion? Because I know you've talked about this, about the UFC kind of positioning these legends and, you know, UFC icons on their way out 
with the craziest, toughest dudes yeah, yeah, on the yeah. way up. Send you out not, in a body and not, bag. And not really sending you out the pro- the proper way. Do you feel like that's right? Or do you feel like they actually do that? Or is that just... I, I don't know if I have an opinion where it's right or wrong. You know, I love to see, like, I'll tell you what, man. <clears throat> like, to this day, if Rampage is fighting, I'm watching. Mm-hmm. If Tito and Chuck are going to fight four times, five times, I'm watching. They're going to get my money. If Randy's going to fight any one of those, I'm like, I love the sport. I'm a fan. So I don't know why I would always keep those guys. It's their business model, their decision. Dana White's done amazing with that organization and, and they have their model and, you know, I got to respect it. You know, would I love to see everyone get sent out with their flowers and and uh, a, a medal and a trophy and a tribute? Yeah, I would love that. I think so many fighters deserve that. Um, but is it my place to say it's right or wrong? I, I don't I don't. What about Mark so. Coleman if he comes back? Will you watch him? You know what? Mark Coleman would be awesome if they, if he'd still be champ if the headbutt was still legal. <laughs> you know, he fought with the headbutt. Yeah. He just get in people's guards and headbutt him, headbutt him, headbutt him, beat him up and stuff. And uh, yeah, he's a legend. I, I'd support him. I'd like to see a, a over 40s um, division. Yeah. In the yeah. UFC? Yeah, I'd like to like see a it. Like a master's division? That's, that's a great idea. Yeah. I like, it's because like, I've like, Again, like I'm, I, I, I'm a fan of these guys, and you've been on this ride with them, and you want to keep seeing the story, you know. Yeah. You, you want to keep seeing the story, and right now I think there's like it's almost diluted because I'm like, who's this guy in the main event? This new guy in the UFC? I don't even know who he's at. Where is he from? And then like the guy who's like guarding, like beats them or something, then you don't, or like they're like five and zero, oh, and then they get their shot, and then. You know, then they, I don't know, like sometimes I, I, it's hard to keep up with it all. Yeah, think about how big the UFC is now versus like when um, Mark Coleman and, and, and Randy Couture, even Randy Couture was fighting. And think of, think about it, like uh, they paved the way for, for the younger generation. And then now the younger generation, they're making a killing, mm-hmm. especially off their endorsements and stuff outside of the UFC because you can't, but because they have a larger, um, fan base, more social media and stuff, because UFC is like the shit right now, right? That's right. So say they do a, a over 40s division where these guys can get some attention and they can go and get like endorsement deals because you, you know, it's, it's a sad part of it, but you have to be honest, like a lot of our pioneers and stuff, they're, they're not doing well financially. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I think that's that's awesome, man. I think they should do something of the sort. We should take care of our fighters. You know, I I'm, I was a fan first before a fighter and man, I like, like you said, man, I, I, I love all the greats and I think they should be taken care of and you know, but anyways, like that's like kind of the growth of the sport. We're a young sport, you know, and it's going to take these growing pains to get there. And, you know, I look at myself, I'm very grateful, but people in my position now do way better. But people before didn't, you yeah, know what right. I mean? You know, but I remember like, you know, you know, you've seen Hoist Gracie win like a $60,000 check, like three fights in one night. That's like crazy. just That's yeah. crazy. That's nuts, 60, you know? Yeah, I, I understand exactly what you're saying, but um, like all sports go through that, but uh, some of them, they have a pension. Like oh, a pension, yeah. Have it like yeah the, think absolutely. about the, the NFL oh, before yeah. before they start making all that. They, they still have like a, a pension, you know, even though inflation fucks them, but still they have a pension when they still get paid, right? Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. Like the NFL, like once you m- do three years, then yeah. you're like, oh, you're grandfathered in and you're going to forever get a paycheck. Yeah. I I would, I agree with you, Rampage. Yeah. I would love a paycheck <laughs> right now. The, yeah. the, the NBA and, and the NFL, they've collectively come together and made make their strike and make their, their stance. And they've won. I mean, there's just not enough money in MMA. They, they continually keep everybody down so that no one can collectively come together. Yeah, but that's challenging because we're not like a team sport, right? We're like individuals, yeah. right? So it's like, how do, how do you do that without a team? It's like you know, a it's, union. That's why when people strike, yeah, it's, then people can try. take those jobs. It's hard mm-hmm. because if everybody were to sit out on the sidelines, I'm sure there's a couple of young kids who would come in and take those UFC deals. That's so it's hard to strike. Yeah, that's what, yeah. That's what yeah. they're saying. I, that, yeah, that's, that's what they're saying. Yeah. Especially when the UFC sold the WWE, like, look, the political power that they have now, it's like... All that, all that momentum we had just got shut down. I, I, I think the easiest thing as a business owner, not as a fighter, is someone should be able to come in and I should be able to pay you 50 grand to put my logo on your shorts, have that banner up, whether it means anything or not, whether I'm going to get sales or not. It's a way for me to identify my brand with you as a fighter because I'm a fan of you mm-hmm. and that's a way for you to make more money. I mean, you guys are not a team sport, so you guys need those ways of having the individual wins. I, I, you know, we talk about the way people have publicity, Rampage being sponsored by Boost Mobile or whatnot, and then those guys going out and supporting him with promotion. You know, I, my first guy I ever sponsored was, was Rampage and Anderson Silva, and I could do my brand or make clothing and merch, right? I did a Verdun Combat Team merch 10 years ago, right before he won the championship belt. Those types of things are how businesses can align with the fighter and promote them. One thing we talk about with fighters becoming famous and with the height of the sport was when you and Nate and Nick got to eat with Anthony Bourdain. 
So can you talk to me about this? Because he was he was a legend in the game, you know, RIP Anthony Bourdain. But talk to me about this lunch or this dinner. Yeah, man, this was a great experience. And, uh, you know, Bourdain was training uh, jujitsu at the time over there with the Dan Hurd death squad. So, you know, he was he was, you know, becoming fascinated with it. And, you know, when the, the, the Dan Hurd death squad, they talk very like like intelligent with the techniques and all that, too. So I think it, gra it grasped like it grasped him for it. And, you know, the guy showed some appreciation. It was cool to go over there and have us and talk with them. He's definitely a legend. And and what he's done, you know, rest in peace and everything. And, uh, you know, I was there too, you know, to, to hang out with the boys and, you know, to help make sure everything, you know, went smooth as well, you know, it was smooth as well. And it was a great experience, man. Bourdain's a great dude and, you know, and rest in peace. Did you guys, did you guys, did it end right there? Or did you guys go turn it on and have a few drinks? Nah, man, we, you know, we, we had some <laughs> ceviche there. I think we ended it there. We went out, you know, not with Bourdain, but we went out ourselves a little bit, you know, uh, went I, ourselves. I, I, I did did you guys out. have a, yeah, that's a great, did I you guys have any did. training sessions together? Uh, no, we didn't. Okay. It was like one of those, like show up in LA, show up at a restaurant and hang out for a couple hours and get to know him. And uh, you know, what was cool is the show was over. They turned off the cameras and then it was able to like talk a little bit more mm -hmm. and, and just kind of like, you know, when the cameras aren't there, people speak a little bit more freely and get to know each other a little better. So it was a cool experience. He was super chill. Yeah, he was chill. He was chill. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, a lot of people talk about the way that Nate and Nick are able to kind of bring in this personality to MMA of this, like fight anyone, anytime, like how you said, jump in first, ask questions. Second, is that kind of the mentality with the way you guys were taking fights and the way you guys were managing each other? Cause you guys managed each other. Or you guys all had separate managers. Uh, we had our own manager and stuff, but we were like our, like Caesar was our head coach. You got to go back though to like MMA. Like it wasn't so well-rounded, you know, back in the day it was very like one dimensional, like, you know, like, like Javier, Vas Javier Mendez was a striking guy, but he was the head AKA coach. You know, Caesar Gracie's a head Gracie fighter coach, but he's a black belt in jujitsu. So you'd have to get like different coaches. But right now, like there's a lot of coaches who, who can do it all. Mm -hmm. So there was times where, you know, we grew and, and we had to corner each other. So I became really good at holding pads for Jake and he had a hold for me. We put each other through workouts and like we kind of coached each other when it was fight time training partners and coach. So Got we it. knew each other well and we backed each other up and we called each other when we needed because we trusted each other in our corners more than anyone because we spent so much time together. But it was a challenge like, you know, to have that, you know, head coach that was there that knew everything at that time. And you had to put it together, had a separate coach for uh, for striking than jujitsu. And and that was, it was a challenge to do that when you have coaches come together and corner you as well. They were like confused and stuff. So Got it. it was a lot of like growth through that. But yeah, we backed each other up and there was nothing like having Jake in my corner. Like I felt confident, like he he wanted me to win. He knew I was up, he had my back and uh, and for Nate as well. Man, I wish I had that throughout my career, man. I, I was more of a, a lone wolf. I had like sparring partners. Yeah, Tito, right? I, I was more, I had more of like <laughs> sparring partners and stuff like that, you know, it was nothing like that. I wish I had that. Yeah, like I love team. that. I love when people say that because like yeah. I do like, I do value that. And I realize how lucky we are that we had that. And, and I, I honestly sometimes think it's like, it's one of the things in society that's kind of like going away, right? Like yeah. you, like you got to have like that loyalty, that group, like, you know, you, you back your homies up. It's not very... A lot more individuals now, you know, and um, yeah, people like they want that. They're like, "Damn, we want what you guys have." And I'm like, "Wow, this is this is special." And yeah. again, I don't know. I, I didn't I didn't know how special it is till you, you know you just have it. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I had close sparring partners. We had great friendships yeah. and stuff like that, but nothing on that level. Mm -hmm. I mean, Luke, you were probably a part of the next. I think it was probably just you guys. Probably both had the best teams in MMA. You had the scrap pack with the Diaz brothers and Jake, and you had Javier Mendez, and you had Kane, and you had DC, you had Habib, you had. Umar, you guys had everybody, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had we had like generations of the team for sure. I mean, the first first AK was like it was a little like we were together, but it was like a little bit. Everyone's kind of off their own the game a little bit because you had Koscheck, which was a bitch. You had Mike Swick, wait, wait, which wait, wait, wait. 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 Hey, you can't you can't just skip over. Whoa, that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, he tried to. I'm gonna yeah, leave. Yeah, no, yeah. You well, I mean Koscheck was just the lone fucking bitch of the of the group. He'd always just like have whoa. energy that just hated on everybody and was out for himself. He was just a fucking bitch. Bro, oh, bro, I, I kind of feel that. I was going to ask him about that earlier, but because I never you met him. You were around, I, hey. I, 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 I sparred him. Hey, I sparred you guys him, all man. think the same thing? No, no, no. About I, I, I never met you him. You think was, that? No, I don't know that. I, I never met him, but I was going to ask him when he was talking about it earlier. 
Then he just he was the fucking bitch of the crew. Oh my! Hey, dad, hey, fuck you, motherfucker! Oh <laughs> hey, my! It's hello, like hey, it's hey, like that. He's just he dude. He was like one of those guys, man. He just like he always thought he was better than everybody else. And like I was on my way up, and like I, I threatened him for sure, and I would I would put on him. And if I but if I got in a bad position, he would fucking try to just make me pay for it, dearly for it. And then I then I would be like fuck, I'll come get you, and then he'd just run away from me and he'd try to get me on a like a, you know. He really? just he just he just never had a good energy. I and didn't he, know and this. He never did. I never met. I, I never, never met, knew this. I never met him. But you know, his energy, you know what I was. Anybody yeah. who knows the situation was in the game knows this guy was just he was fucking out completely out for himself. Does yeah. this have anything to do with the fact that I heard he stole your headgear one time at a practice? No, no, that was Phil Baroni. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, making oh, sure it wasn't him. What were you gonna say? No, nothing much. You know, I you know I I do when you talk about Koshchak's personality, like I just remember him and. And like Chris Lieben, they were on the Ultimate Fighter show together, and I remember they were kind of like like feuding a little bit or or something. Like I don't know, did he piss in his bed or something like that? Did someone say right. there was there's <laughs> there something funny that happened between them? But I could tell like it was like you can see his personality of of who he is, you know. Everyone but else, what, what I like with people that are like. I just like consistent people, right? Like yeah. if you're if you're an asshole 100 percent of the time, at least I know who you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't like inconsistent. Like you're nice and you're a jerk. Or was whatever. he an asshole 100 percent of the time? Well, I just think he was who he was. You know, and he, yeah. I think he had that personality he's talking about a little bit. But yeah, you got yeah, along with there, him. He was no team concept. Yeah. You know what I mean? You go in like we'd all work together. Like Mike Swick, John Fitch, myself, Thompson, even Phil fucking Baroni would be more of a teammate than this motherfucker would just be like, that's a yeah, lot. Mike Kyle would be more that's of a teammate. That's saying a lot. Mike, Mike, Mike Kyle, that's Mike, a black guy. Mike right? Kyle, yeah, Mike yeah. Kyle's crazy as fuck. <laughs> did he, did he, bought, he bit Westman? Is he the guy that bit Wes Sims? Or did Wes Sims beat that bit? Remember <laughs> someone got bit? And Mike, they, uh, Mike, Mike Kyle and Phil Baroni in the gym, you just never knew what the fuck was going to happen. This guy's yelling at him for maybe snitching on what's going on behind the scenes. This guy's giving hey, us they, the whole juice wait, of wait, AK. Hey. Yeah, he keeping it real. Yeah, keep it real, Luke. I keep it real as hell. But they're like, you know, these guys, you never knew what they were capable of. Them. They would come after each other in the gym, but then Koshik was just a fucking... He was just alienated. That, so you don't like Kostya? Is that what I'm getting no, from this? No, not a lot of people did. Anybody with a personality was a real human, didn't like the gun. What, what happened to his career, though? Did he, what happened to Kostya? I mean, he fought George St. Pierre for the championship, and then he I think... phased out. Yeah, I think he phased out a little bit. I know he came back and did one Bellator, and he actually uh, got knocked out by this guy, Mauricio Alonso. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mauricio Alonso is actually fighting. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, putting a fight show on with Scott Coker, and now we're having our second fight show coming on. Uh, Fight Night San Jose 2. Going to do the plug right now, December 14th. The guy who knocked out Koscheck, Mauricio Alonso, is actually fighting a, a guy by the name of Joe Koshot, who's a top 10 grappler going back to MMA out there, too. So, oh, got a little man. plug in Wait, right where there. Is, when, when is your show? Uh, it's going to be December 14th. It's going to be my second show. And it's going to be at the Tech C U Arena. It's the, the, minor league, um, the minor league stadium for the San Jose Sharks. And it's really, it's a beautiful stadium. They built it during the pandemic. I guess the minor league team used to be in the East Coast, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and they built this arena from. But it's like a, it's a mini SAP center. It's brand new. If I'm free, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up. Please there. come yeah. through, yeah. man. I'd yeah. love to have you guys out there, man. It would yeah. be great. Please can you, come. Can do. you let us know where to put the in our description? We're gonna put the link. Where can they go buy the tickets? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're on Ticketmaster, Fight Night San Jose too. But if you go to my Instagram, Gilbert Melendez, or Fight Night San Jose Instagram, there'll be a, a ticket link out there. If you want some VIP tickets, DM me. We can get you. Front row, going, all you can drink. Yeah, yeah I'd love to have you guys, man. I want to go. Oh, oh, fire man. up the what PJ venue? for Rambo. Uh, the Tech C Arena. Tech C Arena. Yeah, it's, and it's, for a new, it's beautiful. It's new right there in San Jose. Uh, then we should go check it out. We hey, oh, I'd love to have I think you guys. We, I think we're going to bring the whole squad. Oh, San please, Jose. Yeah. If we're free, we're, we're going to San Jose. Where it all began. Yeah. And we're going to go take a tour of AK behind the scenes and a tour of these guys' gym. I like San Jose. It's beautiful out there. Yeah, and we have we have a large, a long history of like combat sports. And you got a lot of hot Asian girls up there. Yeah, oh, that's say, why you sound you, like I was Jay. Say, you sound like Jay. Oh, Who likes San Jose? Yeah. Oh, Ram, man. Okay. Hey, now Jay, Jay. They're, not stuck, they're not stuck up up there. The Asian girls are here in Orange County. Are uh, they really? Snooty. That's messed up. Really? Yeah. They're, you're striking out a lot lately? Yeah. The girls aren't feeling you? No. But you're so lightweight right now and skinny. You have abs. They're not feeling that? They're not feeling it. And I showed them I can do uh, push up with my tongue, and that don't work either. <laughs> it's probably because your Tinder profile photo you, is Will Smith. You I don't got no to damn Tinder. Yes, it hey, is. I don't got Tinder. You should go out with Jake, huh? Him and Jake. That, I was going to say, I was you like, and Jake ever gone out together? <laughs> Now, you know what we we yeah we we've hung out in the same place before. We, we, yeah yeah yeah. We have, yeah. No, what does Jake, that mean? No, Dude, no, just... no no Jake. If me and Jake together, he's getting them all. Why? Jake, he's a pretty boy. The uh, girls love him. They just walk up to him and they be all over him. I used to get so confused with him. He'd be like Jake, and I'd be like I don't know who this one is. Or he just left and right back in the day when I was young. You know, he'd bring all kinds of different ones. I'd be like, wait, who? Who's I, that? Yeah, I, yeah, like, I can tell you this. 
him and I are Eskimo brothers. He, we, <laughs> what does that mean? That makes yeah. a lot of sense. I'm, I'm yeah, what does that mean? Yeah. What does not that mean? Surprised. And they weren't white girls. No. You guys used to train together? No, 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 no. I don't do that shit. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I don't do that shit. No, but it's been times where I've dated a girl and finally like, oh, you know Jake? She's like, fuck. <laughs> Damn. You got Jake seconds? I hope it went both Damn. ways. Yeah, you got yeah. Jake seconds or no? I got no? sloppy seconds. Maybe, maybe he got some of my sloppy seconds I, too. Uh, yeah. It happens. Come on. Yeah. It happens. Well, I'll make sure to invite a lot of Asian girls out there too to, for, for you. Out <laughs> no, there. no, 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 yeah, no, no, no. I like them. Hey, invite them. I like them all. But okay. I'm you just saying that Asian girls, Asian girls are a hot commodity now. So a lot of them know that, and so they stuck up. <laughs> oh, I see. It's evolving. Yeah, it's yeah. Evolving. yeah it's a hot they, commodity. Yeah. You didn't what, know that? What do you mean, In hot San commodity? Jose? No, no, no. Everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. Like I've been like an Asian girls my whole life. The first girl I ever kissed was Asian. Straight up, two years old. In Memphis. In Memphis. What was his name? What? 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 Wow, man. I see. Look, I I do nothing but show you respect. What? I, I didn't. Even, hey, <laughs> what I didn't, am I missing? I, I didn't even make fun of you because you got a Cisco shirt on right now. That's Mike Tyson. That ain't Mike Tyson. That's, That's a thong sound. Get away from me, thong sound. That's Mike Tyson. Oh, That's what Cisco. Is that? Why does he have like a Metro Mike Tyson shirt? On? <laughs> <laughs> what is this thing? Like where? Who pulls out a win. Metro? Mike? I can't win. Man. <laughs> I thought it make me tough. I'm see, I with the scrap pack. Yeah. Speaking of tough dudes, I want what's up? What's up, who's on the come up with the scrap pack? Who have to look out for? You yeah, got, man. Got any new talent? Well, I'm pretty pumped up right now because it's like you know second generation third generation and we have a, a homegrown guy by the name Hyder Emil who's nine and zero right now wow. Filipino American guy he's actually in the UFC mm -hmm. so it was fun to like you know guide him and and get him there and and he did a lot of hard training with the community all that but um you know I do commentating for LFA as well and I was able to get him in the LFA and obviously it's great when they when a fighter does their job right like say if you're a manager you're really good as your fighter right like if your fighter does your job but anyways he went out and had three amazing performances in LFA contender series had a great fight and um is 2-0 in the ufc after that too with two finishes had a 38 piece combination as was like uh, he got fight of the night the last one super bowl weekend and he's trying to get a fight right now he's trying to get a fight right now the kid's hungry young and has that scrap pack mentality um but other than that i've been like you know since the pandemic i've been like cultivating some new guys and i got some amateurs who are like five and oh six and one and two guys are making their pro debuts on my um, on my card, December fourteenth, and that's uh, Kyle Clark. He's a two hundred five pounder, number one in the nation as an amateur, number one in California heavyweight, light heavyweight. Uh, Antonio Vasquez, six and zero. Oh. The last guy he fought was an AKA kid who was really good. Like we made two tough local guys fight each other. He's gonna make his pro debut, and I had this other young amateur, Skyshin Jones, and he's a uh, four and zero oh, as an amateur. Hard to get him a fight right now. People look and they're like, we're not fighting him. So. It's kind of fun. And we're saying yes to all the challenges. You know, I think right now in the culture, like I'm at these LFAs and these fighters are 2-0 and and they're just like, oh, I'm going to not take that fight because I'm almost on the contender series, you know? And, you know, we come from a different yeah, era where it yeah. was like, you got to jump on these fights. You yeah. got to say yes. You got a chance to go to Japan. You got a chance. Yeah. To, this is your opportunity. And I feel like um, I'm trying to breed that culture still, but I don't think that's the culture anymore. And now that I'm in this fight game, like as a promoter as well, helping out, you know, people are really gun ho to fight till it's time to go. Then they start, you know, changing their tune a little bit and becoming more picky and all that, you know. Yeah, like, I don't understand it at the amateur level because it, it's not on your record. That's right. Go get the experience. Dude, that's exactly what I tell my youngsters. And we didn't have that as much growing up, right? And I was like, dude, this is where you get it. Like my my number one heavyweight when he was four and oh, he's like seven and one now. Uh, he lost to uh, Aspen Lad's brother, Shaler Lad, who was nine and oh. But I was like, dude, fight him now. You know, we're, we're the underdogs, but it's going to be a great experience. You're going to level up because of it. And you 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 could win. And he almost won. He came up short, but he won that first round. I think he's better, but he got that experience. Here's my boy, Hyder Emil. Look at this. 30, go, 30, here's the, here's the combo. Yeah, here he is. The one, one, winning, two, the one winning. The one winning. Which seven. one's winning? Yeah, wait, oh, that, come on now. Come on. <laughs> come the one on in the white now. shorts. It's a featherweight I'm, battle. Yeah. That's, that's I was so like continuous. Look at that. This isn't round one. This was like in the first minute, I believe. Yeah, look at four minutes. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah. the referee about to stop. My God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anderson Silva was the ref. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wait, what? Hold on. Let me rewind that. That's Anderson Silva. Yeah, he's oh, the hurricane. Oh, I was, you know, we always tell him, I'm, you know, we're the storm. I'm like El Nino, the storm. He's the hurricane. And, and I was like, hey, man, sometimes a, not too much, not too much hurricane. Maybe a, you know, just a little bit of a sprinkle, you know, but he goes ham out there. Yeah, that was good. Anderson Silva did a good job of stopping it right then. <laughs> that is crazy. He made the right choice. He made the right choice. He made the right yeah, choice. he put the work on this dude, huh? Yeah, that was Super Bowl weekend. The Niners came up short for him. I'm a Raider, but you know, San, he was San Francisco guy, and and uh, it was it was a great moment for the team, and it's great to see, you know, and all my amateurs get to spar him. 
you know, and he beats them. But, you know, they, they, they get to know they're training with a guy who's 9-0 and in the UFC, a guy who's not only 9-0, and but he's fighting like that, you know, and that's what I'm trying to breed. I'm trying to breed warriors. You know how it is, like, you can be boring and be 13 and no, no one's going to remember you. But I said, they can play that at your funeral and you'll be legend forever, you know? Yeah. And he has a lot of fights like that already. And and all my guys, I'm trying to, not everyone is. Uh, Just like a, that? <laughs> yeah, not everyone's that aggressive, but everyone has like, we're here to fight, not here to win scorecards. That's good, man. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm trying. I like, to, I like to see fights I, like that. So you were there uh, for the McGregor uh, debacle and me and Rampage were watching that when you guys were walking out and McGregor like threw something at you guys. Is that you like flipping him off or something? No, that wasn't me. I actually believe I was working for ESPN at that time. I do work for ESPN. Okay. So I do the pre post fight show sometimes. So there's a video that was pretend that, that was saying Gilbert Melendez was flipping off McGregor. It's like a viral video, but it's not you. Oh uh, no, so that's can, not me. Yeah, so that's can not you, me. Can you but I mean, like, you know, I remember being there. Yeah. I remember being there for that. And it was uh, you know, I think that was the second fight. Was uh -huh. that the first fight? Yeah, there was the second fight that was going down. And I remember um like Connor didn't show up. He was late. But we were there. Nate was there. We we're covering it. And I, Nate pulled a, a switcheroo on him. So right when Connor left, Nate got up and left. And I thought it was brilliant, right? Oh, you want to show up 30 minutes late? Oh, I already did my job. Got up, left. Everyone left. And then, you know, shit was talked. And then, you know, someone threw something first. Someone threw something second. I don't know. Things were being thrown all over. And, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. I feel like when we talk about these things and everyone's surprised on the internet or they love it, it's just yeah. like, we were just living this life, you know what I mean? Like this, there's just savages all over back in the day. And it was just like, what did they think was going to happen? You know, yeah. like a fight happened at the fights, you know, like that's what happens. You know, I'm just, people are so surprised. What about the Jake Shields and the Mayhem Miller moment? Were you uh, there for that? Absolutely, man. I feel like I'm kind of responsible for that. <laughs> you know, like I was like, if you watch the video, I was that's pretty hyped brother. up. What? That's your Mayhem's my brother. I know what would oh, happen. What, what if Rampage was in the cage that night? <laughs> yeah, I would hope he break break it down. What happened? Break it down. Yeah, breaking it down. I, we had a great night. CBS, CBS. The first time I think Strike Force was on CBS. We're making a run for it. I'm fighting Shin Yaoki. They brought him from Japan. I'm, I feel like I'm number one in the world at the time, but I can't fight BJ Penn because he's in the UFC. And then he's about to fight Frankie or something. And then they're like, "But we got this guy Shin Yaoki who's breaking people's arms and breaking people's ankles." He like tapped out Eddie, Joaquin Hansen. Broke some dude's arm on like New Year's Eve and flipped him off. And anyways, he was like the number, uh, debatably the number one guy out there. They brought him over. I shut him out. I beat him. Jake beat Dan Henderson, shut him out. Well, maybe lost the first round. And then Mayhem just Miller. Maybe, maybe lost the first round. <laughs> <laughs> that was just. Yeah, he lost, the, all right, he lost, he maybe, lost the first maybe. round. He lost the first round. He came back. And Jake here, we're tired as hell. We fought 25 minutes. You know, my thumb's broken right here. And, you know, mayhem is being mayhem, you know, when he comes in here. And again, we're not staged. And and I'm like, yo, back up, mayhem. You know, I, I, I push him back a little bit, back up. And then, you know, that's a green light for Nick and Nate. They didn't fight that night. So they were like, this is this is it right here. So they start busting him up. That's my boy, Bobby Taylor. I think it was like 20 on oh one. It was, it was, it was pretty, it was, my dad was even there trying to pull Nate off. And so you was the first one to start. Well, I just told him to back up. I didn't start it. I tried to diffuse a problem. You know what I mean? <laughs> did you hear, did you hear, did you hear Mayhem's um, side of the story? I didn't. I did. What's his side of the story? He said that, um, by the way, I love Mayhem. I think yeah. he's great. And I think Funniest he's amazing. Dude. And I just like, like, dude, that's like, again, like, Boys will be boys. You yeah. know what I mean? Like this shit happens. And he, like, don't hold, he don't hold no grudges. No, 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 no. He came on the pod yeah. and talked yeah. about it. You know, he said, he said that um, one of the producers, whoever like is over the production, mm -hmm. said, oh, go in there and ask about your rematch or something. Yeah. So he was saying, like, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. But that's like, again, the producers, they're not fighters, right? You know, right. they're not fighters and everything. And, you know, and I'm, I'm, maybe I should have let it happen right here. But, you know, I'm like, hey, back up, bro. He's talking, right? And then what? And then he's like, here we go. Here oh, comes, yeah, oh, look yeah, at Nate threw yeah. a water bottole. Oh, still the same, oh, same. Oh, you yeah. tossed him look into the banner. He tossed the water. They were look just it. waiting for it, dude. Oh, Nate went around the it. back for a double leg. Oh, look, look at, at all that. the tap out shirts. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah look, look, they slowed it down. So I see I see you pushed him uh, and yeah. then he came towards you. I see it now. Gilbert, I never, you tossed him. You tossed him to the banner, Gilbert. Yeah, yeah. That was a tough push. But dude, I think Mayhem's fucking awesome. You know, he was one of like the first guys. You remember he had like the Mayhem monkeys and stuff and- He's like, he's a pioneer, dude. He's a great guy. And again, like I'm, like I'm saying, everyone, like, 
like boys will be boys you know what i mean this shit happens i get in yeah. fights you get in fights and you shake hands afterwards you have a beer it's not like i love it i have grudges and stuff no, and i'm no, like it's yeah, like no. you know what i mean yeah. like we, I don't, we had I don't him know. on the podcast and yeah, he talked yeah, and yeah. not not to cut yeah. you off but we had him on the podcast he talked highly of the situation he's like it was crazy for tv it was crazy for mma but the producers hated it yeah and i guess it almost jeopardized the whole deal i did it did, oh, it did. yeah yeah that was it that was the last time we were on uh you know, oh, for real? Yeah, 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 yeah. The last time that we were on CBS. <laughs> Look at Luke. But Luke's yeah, like I, I remember because like, I was supposed to do a fight. <laughs> did, did, did it cost you money? I, I don't know. If it cost, cost me money. It yeah. cost me eyeballs. Five cost million eyeballs. views. Yeah, five yeah, million five views. Five million views every time we get on. So, bro, that's good. But, uh, for, that, that was good. But I mean, that's but it was. That's but that was said. That's what I said. Wait, real good. quick, just to break it down for the audience, what did they end up cut uh, cutting out? They cut the deal, the broadcasting deal. Yeah. So that was like, oh man, Strike Force is making big moves. We're gonna have a big card on CBS. Like, oh man, awesome. We're gonna be on CBS. We're on CBS. Everything was great. Grand all night. We win, and that happens. And then you know, and then they're like. This is you guys aren't ready. They're, they're you're just, not ready for prime time. Because <laughs> they're, they're they're like a Kamala Harris. They're trying to pull the pull the wool over everybody's eyes. You know, they're like they're like want to show this front, but then behind doors, what's his name? <laughs> Gus Johnson. Have you heard yeah, Gus yeah, Johnson yeah, talk yeah, backstage? Yeah. I have. Gus I, I, Johnson's like the most proper black. Then he, he goes backstage and he's just ghetto as hell. I'm for real? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> ghetto <laughs> as hell. He was like, gentlemen, gentlemen. Yeah. These things happen in MMA. I was like, oh man, I did. I feel bad about it, but I was like, uh, we're a young and honest, authentic team, right? Like, like that's my boy's mm -hmm. speech. You know, I mean, I'm I'm older now. I understand things a little differently, and I understand this promotion. But like, I was genuinely out to be the best in the world and to whoop everyone's ass. And I had a chip on my shoulder. I think we're all there at a point. I don't have a chip on my shoulder no more. But there was like a point where you know I was ready to fight anybody at any time. I just felt like I proved I was the best in the world. And I'm like, this is my boy's time. And I didn't like it, you know? But, you know, but again, boys yeah. will be boys. Did, did he ever get his rematch? Did Mayhem ever get the rematch? He didn't get his rematch. No, he didn't. They lost the broadcasting deal. They didn't <laughs> get any more. I mean, that was Yeah, I think, I think Jake actually went to the UFC. Mm. Like, his contract was up, and he went to go fight George St. Pierre. Mm. And he did that. Listen, just... Gilbert, first of all, I want to say thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Second of all, I want to say for doing the repeat, this is incredible to have you because most people would not do that. So I know you you journeyed down here to come into our brand new podcast studio. Rampage, thank you for being here. Uh, Luke Rockle, thank you for coming back from your four week vacation. Rampage is about to bounce, but for the next like six minutes, I just wanted to break down a quick fight that everybody's asking about you and Strike Force. And since we have a Strike Force legend here, it's cool to kind of walk through that fight together. And then we have one fight we wanted to break down with you, Luke. Okay. So right here we have the Jock Ray fight. It's a strike force legendary fight with you. This and him. was an amazing fight right here. Dude, I'm a Jacare fan and Luke fan. This was this was a, one of the best fights ever. Five, all five rounds, right, Luke? Yeah, five rounds. All five rounds. Yeah, this is for the, the title. <laughs> this is your this is a title fight, right? Title, title fight. He uh, was the champ? Or you he were the, the champ. champ? I was off for like 19 months and I, I never been out of the first round. <laughs> I was like, wow. fuck, what are we doing here? Yeah, I was gonna say one of the commentators during this fight, the audience can't hear the audio, is saying that you have never been out of the first or second round or something like that. And then you had to go fight this guy for the remember, title. Remember Weetzy? <laughs> is, there, is there anything that you remember, uh, Gilbert, from Strike Force that's different from UFC in terms of the fighting style, the audience, the yeah, atmosphere? Yeah. Well, what I loved is we fought in a hexagon, not in an octagon. And I believe the diameter, even though it's not a circle, was smaller. So you're fighting like in maybe a 26-foot cage versus like a 30-foot diameter in an octagon, which is more of a circle. So I thought we pressed the action more. Hence why we're fighting in a ring now, too. And in, in my fight show, we do a hybrid show and uh, MMA in a ring and MMA and Muay Thai in the ring. But I really believe if you fight uh, in these close quarters here, look at this. He was too, look at Rockhold was two steps from, from getting Tim Kennedy against the fence. Hey, look at that. Oh, look at those crazy hands going, man. I love it. Underhook. Tim Kennedy's a dog. He, he was is. just so frustrating to fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah but, but I like that smaller cage. I feel like it increased the action. There was a lot of action because of that. You can see that Joe Luke. Rogan. Was that Joe Rogan in the audience? Hold on. I think that was Joe Rogan right there with that hat. And no, that's Randy tea. Couture. Randy Who's Couture. That? Randy, that's Randy. Sean oh, yeah, it's Shelby. Randy Couture right there, Sean Shelby. Yeah, the UFC had owned us at this point. Was this the San Diego card? This is Oregon. Okay. Damn. Beautiful. Yeah, I remember the UFC bought us out. When did they move from the hexagon to the octagon and vice versa? Like, who did it first? Oh, well, the UFC was always in the octagon. Just when we had a hexagon in Strike Force, it was just the cage. You can get like an eight sided cage or a five or hexagon. Was that a six, five sided cage, right? What's the heck? Six? Six and eight. Six, yeah, it was, six. A, it was a six, I mean. Six and eight. Yeah, it was a six. It was a six sided cage out there. And I think it increased the action more. And we had a smaller diameter right there.
Did you guys enjoy the atmosphere of the of the Strike Force fights more than UFC? Well, I, I I didn't know how great I had it, right? Because I fought in my backyard in San Jose. I'm San Francisco, but you know I could sleep in my own my own bed. Uh, all my fans would show up. I fought there like nine times. I fought there for the UFC title against Benson. Everyone's like, "Let's go, Gilbert!" Pop, 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 pop. You know, like you miss those moments, and you don't really get those when you're like in the UFC, and they're like, "Oh, you're going to be fighting in Alberta, Canada, or you're going to be fighting somewhere else." So. You, you, you love fighting at home. And you know, Luke knows when he fought at home. I mean, he's Santa Cruz legend, you know, Santa Cruz legends, Bay Area legend out there. And, you know, when, when he's comes out, dude, it's, it's a roar, you know, because people have seen our yeah. fights over and over there. So, yeah, it, you do, you do miss fighting in front of your crowd and you, you miss wearing your logos and supporting your team and all those sponsors to support you. You miss that part about it. Yeah. No, the, there's the individuality has been taken away. And that's like the thing of how, how you, get so familiar with fighters is that everyone got to wreck rep and rock what they believed in and what they were and so people could could take to that now these days it's just you don't even know who's who yeah i loved it. i put like santa Ana and old e on my shorts in san francisco you know you luke put old put santa, e? you put old e on oh, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, old what's e. going on with the mic yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know you I know love, what I'm saying. I, I, I love the Hello, atmosphere. Jake. I love the atmosphere too of some of these names. And and Gilbert, I want to get to your Benson fight right after this. But even Luke, when you were fighting these guys, obviously a lot of these guys ended up going to the UFC, the ones that they Beautiful, wanted. Luke. But you guys, you guys had Dang. the ability to build one of the craziest reputations and personalities as fighters. I feel like because of the, the, the like I said, the sponsors and the the way you were able to have that individual individual style. Did you guys have the same team from Strike Force going in the UFC? Like did you keep all the exact same guys for sparring, for training, for everything? I know the scrap pack of course, but what about yeah, everybody else? No, absolutely, absolutely. I just, you know, by the time I went to the UFC, I would say it was like the beginning of the fourth quarter of my career and all that too as well. So man, you know, you outlast training partners, right? When you start in your first fights in 2001 and your last ones in 2019, you know, your training partners from the beginning aren't really there. There's a few but, you know, some some yeah. hang it up and move on. And, you know, they did 12 years and, hey, man, you understand they have to move on, you know. And uh, so, yeah, you have you have to cultivate a new batch of people who who want to be there for you and be as dedicated. It becomes a challenge. It's the iron sharpens iron world. And if you have some people get old and go away, so it's the thing I kind of experienced. Kane and Habib was never around. Habib was always in, in Russia. You know, D.C. was kind of retirement. I was like still like. I was still still there, and so I was like, "Fuck, what do I do? I can't just be here and not like you know. I need I need people to push me. So that's, that's why I ended up making the move with Henry Hooft. And Th oh, things yeah. just started falling apart. Everyone was. That's everyone, when you went from you know, AK to Kill Cliff, or before what was it called? Just, before it Kill just, Cliff, it was our own gym. Really, they they had they had broken up the Black Azillions, and so they were just doing their own thing. But it was called something before Kill Cliff, Black Azillions. No, Zillions. it was something else though. Kill Cliff was called. Uh, it was sponsored by a hospital. <clears throat> uh, we, well, we Black Zillions what it was first. Stan Sanford. Oh, Sanford. Sanford. Yeah, Sanford. Yeah, Sanford. Yeah. We renamed that before that as Black Zillions, and then it was got like it. HK Kickboxing, and then it, then I, I got this. My manager Dave Martin got the sponsor from Sanford, and then we built got this it. massive Stan Sanford gym, and then they converted that. So here we have a, a legendary fight as well: yeah. Benson Henderson versus. Uh, Gilbert Melendez. Yeah. How good was Benson Henderson at this time? Yeah, he was he was well number one in the world, right? Like so, like I said, at the beginning of it all, when I thought I was the best, I want I like wish, I wish I could have fought BJ and then BJ lost to Frankie and um, you know, and then he fought Gray three times. And I remember when Strike Force got bought out, like Dana called me, said, I'm gonna have Gray Maynard come over and fight you. He never did. I ended up fighting Mazadal and a couple other guys, Thompson. But anyways, nevertheless, my first fight in the UFC was for the championship right here. And at that time, um, Benson won two out of three or three out of three against Frankie or something like that. So he was number one. Really good kicks. Uh, you can't tell me different. I beat this guy this night. I got robbed. I won this fight. I beat him up. I truly believe that. I think 99% yeah. of the people believe that. Um, he had some really good leg kicks and he was fast, you know, and he, and he did some good teeps up the middle, some good knees, but, um, but I felt like I won that fight. It was great, man. He's a, he's a savage. I actually really like Benson. Um, but I think I was the better fighter. I pressed him. I was aggressive. You know, I, I beat him, man. Was, I remember, was, I remember when, thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank I remember when, baby. Yeah. And, uh, and if you go read a lot of the comments as well, I think, I don't know if that gives you any, uh any satisfaction but a lot of it a lot of them say this yeah i had a great career like i i was like i beat the dream champ i beat the shooto champ i was a wc champ strike force champ and if i won this i would have been the ufc champ you know and that would have been amazing for me and then i fought diego after this fight 
Yeah, you went on two really good fights. The UFC gave you a championship fight going right into it because that was your first fight coming from being a strike force champion in the UFC, right? That's true. So they did that to a lot of people. I think that's when Rampage unified his belt, right? Because he went from Pride to UFC. They did kind of the same thing. Against Dan Henderson? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. So is that what UFC was trying to do? They were trying to unify belts? Uh, I think just it was just the opportunity at the right time as he absorbed some companies. You know, first he absorbed Pride. Like I used to fight in Pride. Yeah. And I remember I was like, oh man, I made it a Pride. I'm going to be here the rest of my career. And and all of a sudden they got bought out it was it was amazing yeah. i fought in pride out there it was like my first first journey uh yeah they just they absorbed the they absorbed the ufc the ufc absorbed strike force i remember calling scott coker i said is this for sure and he said yeah and then um they re-upped their deal so i had to stay like two or three more fights with them and i fought kawajiri um over there i remember dana b i fought masvidal and i fought thompson again under the banner before we uh we merged look at that face gilbert just fucking mean yeah Straight scratch. I remember out. everyone was booing Benson. He was like trying to go like this. Everyone was like, boo. And I was like, I'm not going to do that either. You know, it was home field advantage. But I remember I was, I was pretty pissed off because like <clears throat> Gilbert got, Gilbert got all the respect. DC, I, everyone was getting the respect and these motherfuckers made me come in. Like they weren't giving me any love and I had to go fucking, okay, you get Vitor Belfort in Brazil. Fucking juice to the gills. I was yeah. like, motherfuckers. God, I mean, do you, you really came think, in, but he won Vitor was juice to the gills? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you? He's 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 got you beat, bear. He's got you beat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but back then, I feel like everybody was running what, like test or whatever well, they were allowing, right? Uh, people were doing some TRTs and different yeah. things, but Vitor was like in all was, seriousness. Uh, Vitor, in all seriousness, was a science project, and he, they were hiding him in Brazil. <laughs> he was a killer. He could, he could only fight. At, he went on this run in Brazil. He beat AJ. He beat he beat everybody. He beat Bisming. He beat but me, he was he beat killing Dan Anderson, people. But he would morph. And you see, he morphed from when, he, when he fought Dan Henderson at light heavyweight. He was like, he looked nasty as hell at, at middleweight. And then he went up in weight class, and he was just like, "What the fuck is this thing?" The and then dude. he went and fought John Jones after that, and he just got even bigger. It was, it was. That was actually a pretty good fight. It was it, insane. It was that's your pretty good fight. Vitor, Vitor Belfort versus Dan Henderson in Pride, and then, and then this is Vitor Belfort versus Dan Henderson in. Part three look, in the USC. Look at, it, look at his body. This is part three. The Mohawk. Yo, Vitor was a killer. This is, this is part, that's part. This is part three. That's in Brazil? Yeah, this was, uh, they fought three times. So I think the second one is this one. This is part yeah, the two. the head kick? Yeah, the head kick. I mean, this guy was on another level, though, when he was killing anybody. I think he held the record for most knockouts, right, in UFC history? Yeah, I mean, I remember him at the beginning when he took out Tank Abbott first. Oh, yeah. And then he what, beat Vanderlei Silva. Like and then Randy the Couture cage. beat him. When Randy Couture beat him was huge. Randy Couture beat Vitor Balfour. Yeah, this is look at how big he is here. He's a big boy. This is this is like you're like, okay, what's going on here? Yeah, but back then I feel like I mean everybody was there was it no was just rules. in Brazil. And I remember I walked into this a crazy like cement arena next to a graveyard. <laughs> and, and then south of Brazil in Jargua de Sul, and there's like do, do, do. the whole place is shaking like kill the american oh, kill the american i'm like the fuck am i doing here yeah i wish yeah, i was in san jose my, man yeah, i'm yeah, gonna sap I go, center the sap center the <laughs> fucking the ufc <laughs> in, uh, oh, debut against shit. vitor in brazil just against killers i mean you guys have seen it all uh, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here but you guys have seen it all in the, in, in the ufc in mma and strike force i mean luke you're still getting ready for a fight you have some of the best up-and-coming fighters right now i mean one thing you have with your fight night it's only in San Jose, right? Yeah, it's only in San Jose, but we're really trying to like revive the Bay Area martial arts. And man, hopefully maybe down in California here soon. But anyone in Southern California is it. really worth the drive or really worth the flight to go out there and see some really good combat. We're going to put on a good show. And yeah, maybe I'll come down here one day. I love it. Do you have a gym too right now that you're working out of? Yeah, I do have my own gym. Y'all need a training center, but I've, I've, I've branched off to be Scrap Pack HQ and I actually have opened my third location in San Francisco. I have one in the Marina on Union Street. I'm opening one in the Mission District right now and possibly in the North Beach right now. It's a, just some good opportunities in the city and just spreading the, the Scrap Pack gospel of, you know, some courage, loyalty, hard work. And, you know, we know how important training is. You know how it's changing yeah. people. You know, you can see like Zuckerberg's, yeah. changing by training and it's not about whooping ass it's just like how durable it 100%. makes you and you can take a beating you know it's like a, yeah you know how you know you could see it you can oh, see bro. so many trains you know so i think it's more important than ever to to spread that it's it's very mainstream so yeah i'm going for it building some gyms out so if you're in san francisco or if you're in town or if you're local we're open one in the mission soft opening this saturday 
Six seven two South Van Nez and um, it's this yeah. Saturday. Yeah, this Saturday. We'll, do a we'll put soft the opening. we'll put all the information in the description. That'd be Just awesome. Send us the Instagram, the the website, all that stuff. We'll put all that. So if anybody out there is watching this, you're looking to train with the boys, Scrap Pack, and all the legends up in the Bay. Uh, make sure you guys check the description here, or you could follow him on Instagram. And we'll plug the Instagram here too. Awesome. And Luke, you have a fight coming up. You want to talk about or not oh, yet? Really? No, nothing yet. Not yet. <clears throat> but we're training. And things things have been offered, so yeah. we're uh, we're gonna get in the gym, start training. The last two Something weeks, fun's gonna Luke's been getting offered some contracts, so he's been in here today. He was in here with Cheeto Vera and his coach Perillo. We're watching him move around again. It's always good to watch Luke move around in here. He goes through sparring partners like it's Skittles, but it's good. It's good to see it in that environment. Same thing like you're saying for all the people watching this. Just to lose weight, I train. I don't train to be a fighter. I just mess around with Rampage because it's easy to poke fun at him. But I mean, it's the best way to stay in shape, to feel good recover luke's a big advocate of recovery the way we use our sauna the ice bath the way we Absolutely. eat all everything that we do here when it comes to that mainly comes from luke that's half the reason why this guy's getting in shape yeah and so. i actually want to say i admire you guys for that and that was one of the reasons why i came down here i really love your guys's contribution to the mma community and i've seen you guys hitting it hard and you know, you know, doing your guys' thing out here. And I think it's it's awesome. So yeah. I'm, I'm really privileged and happy to be out here and, and share this with you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, the main thing, and, I'll, and then we're going to wrap up, but Rampage and me always joke around. But when it comes to this, like, that's what, that's what we're doing here. We're trying to just build something for our team, the guys we work with, you know, the athletes we support so they could come here and train at the Jackson House in Newport Beach. We have the ring here that we built for Rampage's fight coming up, the gym for Coach Brillo and Luke and Cheeto and everybody. Plus we have Coach Yogi who has about 10 boxers with him now that fight in the WBC and he has Dean the Great, one of the guys on Misfits. So we have a huge squad here. So plus, come work out with you guys yeah, right plus now. We I don't like getting like, new come podcast work out with right now. It's fun. It's cool. <laughs> it's a special. good it's a good environment right now. We're having yeah. a good moment and we're not trying to abuse it by going too hard and taking advantage of too much. Just kind of building within our community first and I feel like that's what makes this so much fun. Eventually one day we'll do a tell all podcast with me and Rampage on how this all happened. For now, I like the internet thinking that I just bully him. <laughs> all right, guys, make sure you guys go check out the description and all the link in the bio. Make sure you guys follow Luke. He has some stuff coming up with a big fight. We have some new product dropping. We just dropped our brand new JX1 watch and all our new chains. And we have a bunch of new scrap packs opening, as you guys heard here from the man himself, Gilbert Melendez. So if you're looking to train, check those out. I'm Barry Gidio. That's the Jackson podcast. That's not Rampage Jackson, but normally he'd be sitting right there.